What's going on, growers? James Pigioni coming to you live from Jersey. Today, I want to share with you three easy and fast growing fruits that you'll wish you planted sooner. Let's go! I've been gardening for nearly 10 years now, and through the years, I've grown almost every single kind of fruit that's available in my particular location. Everything from pears, to apples, to goji berries, to gooseberries, to aronias, and throughout all that, I've narrowed my favorite and the best fruits that everyone should be growing because they're quick, easy, and delicious, down to just three. The first easy and fast growing fruit is blueberries. When it comes to blueberries, it's hard to top in overall flavor and ease to grow, and these blueberries that you grow yourself, they're not gonna be anything like the ones in the store. The ones in the store, they grow the those blueberries the specific varieties because they grow well they ship well and they store well the whole focus of the people in the stores and those farmers is profitability to make money when we're growing our own uh, blueberries in our backyard we're not worried about profit so we grow the ones that have the best flavor that are the biggest that have the nicest production so it's completely different when you're growing your own blueberries when it comes to growing blueberries it's relatively easy to do but there's three important things I want you to focus on and the first one is the soil when it comes to blueberries, they like a nice well-drained soil, but they like it to be acidic. So an acidity from about 4.5 to 5.2 for a pH level is what blueberries like. If your soil isn't that acidic, you can mix in some peat moss or some pine needles and that'll bring the pH level down. The second thing about blueberries is if you're gonna grow them, they need a pollinator. So you need at least uh, two varieties to make sure you get good pollination and three varieties would be even better. Notice how close we plant these. We want different varieties planted next to each other that flower at similar times so we get good pollination. The third thing about blueberries is that they've got really shallow roots. So you want to make sure you don't have any weeds growing and that if there's any weeds you pull them out right away and you don't want to be cultivating a lot around the base of the of the blueberries because you don't want to uh, negatively affect those shallow roots. That's why a thick mulch on your blueberries works so efficiently. It helps retain moisture, keep those weeds down and it just helps with the overall growth. When you're buying your blueberries, I suggest you get at least three-year-old plants. This way your plants are going to start producing early and quickly. For instance, this one right next to me here, I put this in the ground only last year and we're already getting berries on it. So we're already eating and getting uh, some nice harvests. And blueberries, they grow fantastic in pots. If you don't have the space, put them in pots because it's really easy to grow and make your own soil at whatever pH you want. The second easy and fast growing fruit is raspberries. And like blueberries, raspberries have their own world of variety and flavors. So don't just think of those sour, tasteless red things you get from the food store when you think of raspberries. Instead, think of yellow, sweet, melt in your mouth berries, like these ones here, the yellow ann. So sweet and so good and also so productive. I would say raspberries are the easiest fruit to grow. They grow so vigorously that it's like almost like weeds. It's tough to even keep up with them sometimes. And that leads me to my three things you should know when growing raspberries. The first thing that you should know is that there's a bunch of different kinds of raspberries, flavors and varieties. So if you want something sweet and mellow, then go for the yellow raspberries. If you want something with a nice amount of sweetness but some tartness too, go with the red raspberries. If you want something with a super intense flavor, then go with these black cap raspberries. The only thing about the black caps is they have a good amount of large seeds in them. So it could get a little crunchy kind of. So if you don't like that, you know, that might be up to you. But that's the cool thing. They're all three different kinds. So whatever you prefer, make sure you grow that one. The second thing about raspberries though, is that you gotta thin them out pretty regularly. Like I said, they grow so vigorously. You don't want them getting too out of control, taking over your garden and shading things out too much. Because when you get big raspberries to pull out, like they can get thorny and you know, it's just, it's just not something you wanna do. And the third thing is learn what kind of raspberries you have and the proper way to prune them. Pruning them properly will increase your harvest by so much. It looks like Tuck is digging himself a little hole between the rows of raspberries and he's got a nice shaded spot. He's gonna probably just dig nice and deep so he can get cool. If you guys enjoyed the video and you guys enjoy seeing Tuck in it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. And uh, whenever you're shopping on Amazon, don't forget to use our Amazon affiliate link too. That helps me and Tuck just a little bit, doesn't cost you anything. But he's having a lot of fun in here underneath this sea of just absolute raspberries. Another reason that I love raspberries so much, besides the fact that they're so easy to grow, is that they get to production so quickly. For instance, if you put everbearing or fall bearing raspberries in, in the spring, then those things could have fruit on them that same year in the fall. So plant something in the spring, get the fruit on it in the fall. To me, that's just so cool. Just like blueberries, raspberries grow fantastic in pots. So if you don't have the space in your garden or you don't want to take the chance of them spreading too much, just grow them in pots. And that leads me to my third easy and fast growing fruit. This one happens to be my favorite fruit to grow overall. And it's pretty obvious because it's just blanketed all over my garden. And that one is strawberries. This year we harvested more strawberries than we ever have. And it's felt great because we've been able to just come out here, fill up bags and give them away to our friends. And they've been able to enjoy them too. And it's convenient because 
they're so easy to grow. One of the easiest things to grow. When it comes to growing strawberries though, there's three things I want you to focus on. The first one is the planting style, which is super important. When it comes to putting your strawberries in the ground, you never want to bury the crown. That's where the leaves unfold from, right in the center. So when you're planting your strawberries, you want to uh, clear your soil and then dig a little hole, then put a cone inside of that hole. Place the crown on top of that cone and let the roots drape over the sides. This is an important technique when planting your strawberries. You want to make sure you get it in the first time. The second thing that's important with strawberries is making sure the area is all weed free. Because just like blueberries, uh, strawberries have very shallow roots. So if you've got perennial weeds and other weeds for these strawberries to be competing with, it's going to greatly negatively affect them. The third thing about strawberries is just like raspberries too, you want to make sure you're thinning them out. They could seriously take over your whole garden, but you want to maintain rows that are relatively thin. This will avoid some of the issues you can get from pest and disease and lack of water. You'll notice the three fruits that I mentioned in this video are super common fruits, but the uncommon thing about them is the variety selection and the fact that you can get stuff that's way different in the stores. And I think there's a reason that these are fruits that are super common because they taste so good and they're easy to grow and they're things that like everybody likes. So I mentioned many times, there's people that are gonna tell you, try stuff that you never tried before. Try some rare stuff, try some unique stuff. I definitely think you should. Something like these gooseberries. It's fun, it makes you know diversity, it makes things uh, a little different, but make sure you have your foundation in your strawberries, your raspberries, your blackberries, your blueberries, all those kinds of things. I've got peach trees and stuff too, which I'll show you just a couple. Mm. These are good though. Peaches tend to be one of my favorite flavored fruits overall, but I, they're not really that easy to grow. They take a good amount of time and they take a lot of space. So I suggest definitely growing fruit trees, but these things that I chose, they're berries because they're easy to grow, they're fast to grow. Anyone can be growing them. Before I let you go, I just wanna share with you a few more of the fruits that I'm growing and talk a little bit about them. So this one right under here, I really love a lot, especially for a food forest. And this right here is a currant. These are the white currants. So out of all the currants, the white currants tend to be my favorite. Here's a little set right here, then there's another nice set down here. So they're pretty productive and they're sweet and good. They just have pretty pretty big seeds in them. But the white currants tend to be my favorite flavored ones. I like them better than the black ones or the red ones. Mm. Really sweet and again, a great understory tree because they'll grow well in shade. Right above it is the Prigioni apple. When it comes to apples, apples are definitely much harder to grow especially when you want to try to do more organic. This year, we don't even have that many Prigioni apples on this one. And this is an apple tree that I started from seed. So you would think it would do better and be more productive, which is the sheer number of apples and stuff. But the Curculio came heavy on this one. So we're going to have to spray it thicker with the clay, kaolin clay next year. But overall, it's a really healthy looking tree. Again, apples, they're much tougher to grow than a lot of your berries and stuff. I want to show you some of these grapes behind me. Grapes are another one of those things that they're relatively hard to grow. They're going to take a little more time than something like your berry plants. But once you get into heavy production, you only need a few big productive grapevines in order to just get massive amounts of fruit. So grapevines tend to have a lot of issues with fungal, especially early in the season. So you wanna make sure if you're growing grapevines, you're gonna grow them like up a trellis and they get a lot of airflow and a lot of light. You don't really wanna do it like this. If you do as I have it right here, you have to do a lot of pruning. It ends up being a lot more maintenance and they're overall harder to get. If you do have the space to plant a lot of different kinds of fruits and stuff, I definitely suggest you get things in like a cherry tree. You need a couple different kinds of cherries because if you want a sweet cherry, you need another pollinator because they're not really self-pollinating trees. But one thing I definitely think you guys should get if you have the space is hazelnuts. Hazelnuts or any filberts, they're just, they taste so good. The trees are productive and they take a little longer to get into production, but it seems like nuts, once nuts get into production, they produce for a long amount of time and they produce lots and lots of fruit. So this tree is just sagging so much more than it ever ha has just by the sheer weight of it. So it's taken a number of years to get here, but now that it's here, I think the harvest is just gonna increase and increase every year to an incredible amount. If you wanna grow a berry that's just a little different than your raspberry or your blackberries, you should try a combo berry, like your boysenberry or your tay berries. Look at the size of these things. You get these nice, massive berries, relatively tart, good flavor. So much juice in them though. I love these ones. Such a treat. Mm. Melt in your mouth with a few little seeds in it, but these are some of the fruits that I love growing. I wanted to mention a few fruits that I've tried before that I just basically got rid of because I don't even like them. The first one that I really dislike is the aronia berry. You really have to process it if you want to use it, so I'm not a big fan of it. Another one that I'm not a fan of that a lot of people do like is the goji berry. I've tried them, I taste them, they don't taste that good to me. So they might be really healthy for you, but 
they taste terrible in my opinion. The third one that I really don't like is the autumn olive. I tried autumn olives, they really don't taste that good at all. I've had the cousin of the autumn olive, the gumi, which tastes pretty good, but again, to me, I'd rather plant raspberries, blackberries, strawberries, boysenberries, or gooseberries than any of those other things like those super rare ones. In my opinion, there's probably a reason they're super rare. That's today's video, growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Recently, the food forests have just exploded in growth and they've got so much fruit to harvest. So me and Tuck want to bring you all along for that. That video will be coming out really soon. But if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share with your friends. Don't forget to check out the merch down low. And whenever you're shopping on Amazon, do not forget to start your shopping with our Amazon affiliate link. I'll put it right in the description. And me and Tuck will be back at you with another one really soon. We out.